the side of the screen. Whatever. So I have my notebook here. It's not from school, but it's one I write at my dad's. I'm bringing it to school, so I'm skipping the first story because I don't like that one. Because I'm terrible at trying to think of a spell to write, so. So, most of them are like queer stories. This one's called The Hotel. So. Yeah, you guys are the first ones to hear these because I haven't read them to my friends and I haven't read them to my family nor my teachers, so I'm the first to hear it. Even though one of my friends, even though like three of my friends might. I need to make sure my media's all the way up. Just. Oh no, I can't. Uh, that was perfect. Okay, whatever. Because my friends say they can't hear me, but I'm like, well, mine can hear me, so. Hmm. Yeah. So I'll just try to talk louder. Good. It was an early Saturday morning in summer. Jade had just been woken up by her alarm. Jade, her sister Melanie, and her parents were going to London. She had she had just put on a pink dress with daisies on it. She grabbed her suitcase and headed downstairs. Her parents and sister were waiting for her. Let's go, Jade said, yelled. They climbed in, the, in their black van and drove to the airport. Little picture right there. If you can barely see it. I just kind of wanted to write so I didn't spend much time on it. I mean, they had to take a plane. They weren't going to drive to London. You didn't think that, did you? In the car, Jude and Melanie were fighting over who should get the window, who should get the window seat on the plane. Girls, stop fighting, fighting, or I swear I will turn this car around. Their dad yelled. Rock, paper, scissors. Jade whispered. Melanie nodded. Rock, paper, scissors, Melanie and Jade said. Yes, I won, Jane yelled. Fine, but I get the window seat back, Molly said disgusted. Jade, Jade shrugged. They finally got to the to the airport. Tickets, please, said the ticket checker. The family in front of Jade sh showed him their tickets and moved along. Tickets, please, the ticket, the ticket checker said once again. Jade's family showed their tickets and moved along. Next was the back checker. Jade's mom put her suitcase on in person the conveyor belt. No beep. Da Jade's dad put his suitcase on the conveyor belt. No beep. Jade put her suitcase on the conveyor belt. No beep. Molly put her suitcase on the conveyor belt. A beep. Mel, what did you put in there? Jade's mom whispered loudly in, in Melanie's ear. Just my phone and clothes, Melanie said. Oh, the phone must have triggered the alarm, the bag checker said understandingly. So they moved along. They got on... They were on the plane. Jade, of course, sat at the window seat. Melanie sat next to her, texting on her phone. Hello, everyone. I'm your pilot, the loudspeaker said. They don't call it a loudspeaker for nothing, that's for sure. While Melanie was texting away, Jade pulled out her notebook and started to write. What should I do in London? She, she wrote. Yeah. Soon Jade slowly drifted off to sleep. When she woke up, the plane was landing. She stood, she stood up and stretched. Molly got up and walked out onto the aisle. Jade followed. They got off the plane and waited for a taxi. When one came, Jade's mom told the taxi to drive them to Deep Sea's hotel. As he drove, the taxi driver babbled along on how Deep Sea's hotel was haunted by a girl ghost. Jade wanted to laugh, wanted to laugh, but her mom gave her a look. They reached the hotel and they were glad. They didn't have to listen to the driver anymore. They looked at the hotel. Not very pretty, that's for sure. It was made of bricks. Some of the windows were broken, and the garden was dead. They walked in and kind of upset about the hotel's appearance. The woman at the counter said, Can I help you? She didn't sound very nice. Oh, yes, I'm Lucy Alter. This is my husband, Mark Alter, and my daughter, Jade and, and Melanie. And Jade's mom replied. The woman gave the them their keys and stopped listening. Melanie, being Melanie, popped a piece of gum in her mouth and chewed obnoxiously. Stop chewing so loud, Jade complained. Stop complaining, Melanie said. They got to their room. It was okay. Not it was terrible. Even cavemen wouldn't live here. Jade w walked over to the broken window. She lifted what was left of it up. There's no point, Jade, Melanie said. Melanie was right. There wasn't any point. Ellie said. Jade was on the verge of tears. Don't hurt me, don't hurt me, Jade said. Hurt Melanie. 
Now let me look at her sister in disbelief. How could her sister say that? That at that very moment, the closet door swung open and blew Melanie and said, Melanie! <laughs> Judy yelled. Judy couldn't believe she said that. Who's next? The voice said. They didn't wait for an answer. The door the door swung open once more and little Jade's mom and dad inside. Jade was alone. Finally, the person came out of the closet. Come with me, they said. Jade, Jade immediately burst into tears, but moments later, Jade was blown inside the closet. Their family, their family was never seen again. Little did they know, everyone in that town was a ghost. What? That took me five minutes to read. Wow. Um... This, no, I'm not going to read this one. It's, it's really dumb. Oh, the circus. That's a good one. It's after the circus. I forget. Oh, Asylum. Mm, I'm going to read them all. I'm sorry. I have to. Okay. The circus. It was a hot summer day in Los Angeles. Alyssa Haken was outside playing basketball. Alyssa was teased for liking sports, especially by girls. But she enjoyed it and went on playing. Alyssa liked meeting new people. She liked making new friends. But on this particular day, she should have just stayed home. There was a new girl in t There was a new girl in town. Why are you wearing so much black? said Annie Martin. Because I can, said the new girl. Do you have a problem with that? Alyssa was watching the whole thing go down. So was the rest of the school. You look like you're going to a funeral. Annie replied, surprised the girl had talked back to her. Alyssa walked over. Hey, quit it, she said. Good. Well, isn't it? Basketball girl, said Annie. Who do you think you are? Someone, someone who wants you to leave. Alyssa said, mimicking Annie's voice. <laughs> Bye, basketball girl, graveyard girl. Annie said, disgusted. Who is she? Who is she? The new, new girl asked. Annie Martin, mayor's daughter. Uh, Alyssa said, looking at Annie, walking away. Oh, Annie said, so what's your name? Alyssa said. Rosie, she said. My dad's a ringmaster at the circus. My mom's lion tamer. Wow. Melissa said surprised. My dad's an author and my mom's a lawyer. Rosie, Rosie may be acting normal now, but you'll see. Do you want to go to the circus with me tonight? Rosie asked hopefully. Sure, I can meet your parents, Alyssa says. Excited, the girls separated. That night, Alyssa waited for Rosie at the gates of the cir circus. Rosie finally came. There you are. There you are, Alyssa said relieved. Sorry, sorry I'm late, Rosie said. They walked in the circus. Where is everyone, Alyssa said. Just come with me, Rosie said suspiciously. She took her She took her into a tent. Mom, Dad, we're here, Rosie said. You must be Alyssa, said Rosie's mom. Open the closet. Yes, Mother, Rosie said. Rosie opened the closet and her mom pushed Alyssa in. Let me out, Alyssa screamed. Put her in with the others, Rosie's mom said. Rosie pushed the closet into a room with some more closets with their girls in them. They were collecting young girls to get away with things. Rosie would take over different girls' bodies because she thought she wasn't pretty. So look out, because you could be next. Then, oh, no, I'm skipping puppy. I don't want to do puppy. Asylum! This is my favorite then. I, go, I think I can read you the short stories, because, you know, they're short. I was lying in bed one morning, eyes wide open, waiting for something to happen. Nothing. Then the TV turned on. Hello, we're here with Kansas Insane Asylum, Dr. Renlin, said the news reporter. I wondered what was so important about the Insane Asylum. You may be wondering what's so important, said the doctor, pretty much reading my mind. Well, some of our patients have gone insane. I was completely shocked. I phoned my best friend, Leah. She picked up the phone after the third ring. Hello? She said, cal she said calmly, probably because she didn't watch the news. Leah, some people at the insane asylum have gone insane. I yelled, definitely not calmly. Wow, she said. Let's go to it. I almost dropped the phone. Are you insane? Are you insane? I yelled, no, meet me at my house, she said. And she hung up. I had been dragged into a horrible idea. I grabbed my phone and headed over to Leah's house. I went up to the house and knocked. My mom had been texting me the whole way there, but I ignored them. 
There you are, Leah said, coming outside with her parents. What? I asked. A tornado was coming, she said, she said nervously. There it is! She ran in and went into the cellar with her parents, forgetting about me. Forgetting about me and locked the cellar door. I was so scared I dropped on the ground and cried. As far as I know, I was hit by the tornado and knocked out. When I when I woke up, I was in the doctor's office. People around me were crying. I got out of the bed and said to Leah, Don't, don't cry. I'm fine. Leah said, sir. Leah started, started acting funny. I can't believe she went insane, she said between sobs. I was confused. I know. My, my mom said, sobbing as well. Guys, why are you crying? I said, confused. And what are you talking about? I didn't go insane. When my mom started to talk, my heart dropped. If only I had given her the medication to keep her sane. She said, I thought I was dreaming. So in my dream, so in my dream, I decided to go. I decided to go to the same asylum. At the asylum, two doctors were talking. I can't believe Jade's mother forgot to give her the medication, said one doctor mildly. I know. Now she's, now she's been hit by a tornado, said the other one furiously. I walked into the asylum more confused than ever. <laughs> Um, I looked in into the windows of the people who had gone insane. On the first first door of signs in Maya. I peered in the window. There was a girl looking around as if she didn't know where she was. Then she ran over to the window yelling, Let me out! Let me out! I thought she was talking to me until I saw she was talking to the person next to me. I left the asylum because I was afraid of the girl. I wanted to go to the graveyard to pay my respects as I did every Saturday. When I got there, I saw a new gravestone. It said, Here lies Jude Mary from 2007 to 2018. A tear ran down my cheek. I sat down and laid my head against the gravestone. I felt a hand on my shoulder. I turned my head to see another spirit around my age. How did you die? She whispered quietly. I was hit by a tornado, I said. And you may be wondering, am I a ghost? The answer is, yes. Dun, dun, dun. Well, yeah, I totally liked, no. Okay, Graveyard Gut. It's like two pages long, guys. It's only two pages long. This is like a 12 minute video. I'm, I'm gonna be surprised if you watch this whole video. Why did they have to die? Stop, Maria Clover. Oh, stop it. It's just some little girl who, who, died, who died in a fire in like the 1900s, said her friend Jackson Roberts. It's still sad, Maria said. Jackson left the graveyard. Screamed a little girl. Who who says that? Maria nervously said, Get off my grave! The little girl yelled, I'm not standing on your grave. Maria said, Help me. The little girl said. Maria looked around. Where are you? she asked. I'm not up, but I'm down. The little girl said. Maria looked down. Dick? she said. The little girl said. So Maria dug down and down and down until she reached the co a coffin. Open it, the girl said. The girl said, then climb in. So Maria did. Then the door of the coffin slammed shut, and Maria was never seen again. Yeah. So this one is called Unknown Caller. This is like my favorite. This this is my nickname for my friend. Okay, Abby, we'll be back tomorrow. Bye! Abby's mom said, Bye. Bye! Abby yelled back, I'm gonna watch a movie. Her parents closed the door. Abby put on a scary movie and sat down. In the middle of the movie, someone called. Hello? Abby said to the phone, I see you. The rest of the said on the other side of the line. Then they hung up. Abby unpaused the movie. Then the phone rang again. Hello? Abby said, I'm behind the couch. The raspy voice said. The, then they hung up. Abby put the movie back on. The phone rang once more. Hello? Abby said annoyed at this point. I'm behind you. The raspy voice said. Abby realized the voice wasn't coming from the phone. It was coming from behind her. And that's what I have so far. Yeah. I think I've read you all of my stories in here. I think I did. I might skip like one. I just didn't 
Because I didn't want to. But it worked well. This is like a 14 minute video. Oh, wait, no, now it's 15. Okay. I wonder how much. I've been filming for 15 minutes and only have 7% on my tablet now. Bye.